All aboard, Hardies! Welcome to Hope Valley Central Station. Your transportation to Hope Valley with your conductors, Carrie and Morgan. Well, Hardies, we were right! We got it! We did it! 100%! <laughs> we pretty much like knew exactly what Nathan's secret was. Now, we did get a few things wrong as far as like who knew and who knew what, yeah. who knew what and all that kind of stuff and what really went into having the secret revealed. But we were right. Yeah. We got it right. Nathan, we did. Dak took Nathan's place with the recruits. It's, oh mm-hmm. my gosh, I cannot believe we got it right, y'all. I cannot believe we got it right. Virtual uh, high five. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, it's just so shocking to me that we got it right. Because usually, you know, I figured that we were going to have some missing pieces that were going to come out. Yeah. Um, which I think that there probably is some more stuff that that's going to come out with the secrets because I feel like there's some oh, things, yeah. that, you know, that Nathan, that, st- that Nathan still needs to get off his chest. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah. Wow. But Dang, we're, we're good. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yes. Yes. Guys, you know us well enough to know this is our sense of humor coming through. We're not truly this conceited, okay? Just say it. <laughs> I think but, uh, I think the biggest I think the biggest thing that blew my mind, honestly, was Nate's secret because obviously we already knew what it was. Yeah. So it really wasn't it wasn't a secret to us. We already knew what it was. We have. I mean, we haven't let y'all in on this, but we have some insider information. Uh, not really. <laughs> Liar. She's lying. She's lying. We knew nothing. We knew just as much as what you guys knew. So we just, we're, we just, we just go off of what we see and our imaginations. Okay. Yeah. But uh, I think the thing that blew my mind the most was I seriously thought that Elizabeth knew something happened at Fort Clay when she from that preview I seriously thought yeah, that I mean I didn't think that this conversation was going to start off about <laughs> Allie because I did not see that scene between her and Allie coming yeah, um, I didn't either and let's just go ahead and get, get, uh, start with that because I feel like that's pretty loaded uh scene yeah. um a lot of people, uh, obviously in the first episode, a lot of people were bringing on her, but also on Nathan saying that Nathan should have taught her better, should have taught her boundaries, should have taught her this. Like, speak, I don't have kids. I have a little nephew and I have some niece and some twin nieces, uh, but I don't have any children of my own. Um, but I was 13 at once mm-hmm. upon a time. And I know that, yes, what my parents teach me, especially right now, I'm going back on a lot of what they've taught me um, now that I'm getting into my adult years and everything like that. You know, I'm 24. But I can remember at 13 years old and thinking that my parents were wrong about something and or that I felt like I needed to say something or I needed to act on something I was feeling, uh, despite what my parents were teaching me. I mean, who hasn't kind of rebelled a little bit against what their parents have taught them or, you know, even respect wise? even when it comes to like respect and obedience and things like that. Um, I think also when you grow up in a life that Allie has grown up in, losing her mother at four years old, which let's think about that. I can't recall anything that happened to me whenever I was four years old. Mm. I can't remember what my parents looked like when I was four years old. I know that they were being younger than what they are now, obviously, because that's just how life is. But, you know, I can't remember hardly nothing, anything. I can't even hardly remember anything that, that happened to me at five, much less four. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then her dad obviously abandoned her shortly thereafter. So she's never really knew her dad. Um, mm-hmm. And obviously, I'm sure she knows that he left because, I mean, she's far enough to know, like, my dad's not here. My Uncle Nathan never yeah. said anything about him dying. So obviously, he just left. Mm-hmm. Uh, his Her mother, her grandmother is deathly ill I'm guessing or or was her age or something like that was the reason why she couldn't yeah. stay with her grandmother and then of course Archie as far as they knew was in prison mm-hmm. um so imagine being at her age and having literally everyone in her life leave her some way somehow yeah and constantly having to worry about her uncle Nathan dying in action 
just like that Jack did. Um, I kind of understand her just like her being so desperate to mm-hmm. cling to someone like Elizabeth, who has been such a light in her life, who's yeah. uh, helped her find a voice, um, has really just changed her life, helped her make friends, helped her with her schooling, um, showed yeah. her how smart she was showed her how incredible of a little girl she is I mean obviously hearing it from the only parent you have uh still I'm sure she obviously cherishes her relationship with her uncle and that's one of the driving forces that's why she's so desperate to put her and him and Elizabeth together like what could be better for her the two most important people in our life being together Mm -hmm. she's only thinking about that she's just thinking about how these two incredible people in my life I could see that they like each other. I could see that they they had that attraction to each other. And did you say the way she smiled at you? <laughs> Don't you have to be at the mercantile? <laughs> his Batman voice. Like uh yes. his Batman voice. And the fact that Kevin yeah. shared that makes it ten times better. But oh, um, yeah. but yeah. yeah, I mean Well, and I mean sometimes it, I mean let's just be honest 13 is a rough age in the best of circumstances and Allie does not have the best of circumstances you know I mean 13 is a very confusing age anyway because like 12 and 13 because you know not to get um to I mean keeping it PG here your body's changing your hormones are changing you are too old for this, not old enough for that. You know, it's like that. You're I discovering that you through. have feelings for boys. You're discovering what it's all about yeah. when the boy and the girl like each other. You're, you know, I mean, I'm sure she's not. I mean, there's probably been times where she, like, obviously Anna likes Robert right now. And they're in Robert likes Anna. And, like, she's having to go through that situation herself. She's going through her own yeah. little, her own little love triangle yeah. right now. Yeah. And, yeah. um. Thank goodness you know, we're not having to watch that one. Oh. <laughs> I love you, Allie, but thank goodness we're not having to watch that triangle too. <laughs> you know, I went, I went back and rewatched the episode because, guys, we just watched um, episode eight. Um, we're recording this on a Monday, and so we just watched it last night. And there was so much, like, it was a bombshell episode that I literally did not even catch parts of because it was just so. I was screaming at my, I was screaming at my phone because like, I felt like they were like, I felt like the commercials were getting longer and longer and longer. (laughs) And I was like, what is going on? Are they like, are they showing the same? Like, cause they were showing pretty much the same commercials over and over again. I'm like, I don't care about your picky cat. I do not care about the stupid <laughs> smart car. I just want to see Nathan and Elizabeth like talking about his secret. I want to see, like, I want to, like, come on. Yeah. But I, went, uh, I, went back, I went back and rewatched the episode um, before we came on to record this. And one thing that stuck out to me okay, we've already had the adoption ceremony. So right. as far as everybody's concerned, now we do know that there's the 90 days before it's official, which leaves some room for something to happen. I'm just saying, they keep saying the 90 days. There's a, yeah, they keep, yeah. I'm waiting on something to happen there. But uh, aside from that, something that stuck out as interesting to me, I, Nathan's already adopted Allie. And yet in that scene between Allie and Elizabeth, they're both still referring to him as her uncle. I don't, I don't know what that means, but that, that has just really stuck out to me. Uh, well, I guess because I, 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 and it's like somebody was, uh, obviously I've seen some theories and I, I agree with these theories. I think they would be really nice, but um, either, like, and uh, I'm just going to go ahead and skip this episode, but the synopsis uh, had been announced for episode 11 and 12. And I think it's, I think it's episode 11, right? Or is it episode 12? Somebody goes missing. That somebody goes missing in episode 11. That yeah. someone goes missing. It's one of those episodes. And a lot of people are now thinking that it might be Allie because, you know, she's her emotions are going everywhere this these past couple episodes. And um, she could probably, in her emotions, just, like, run off. And not necessarily running away. Um, right. But just, like, needing some space, feeling like everything's just crashing all around her. Um, despite getting adopted by her Uncle Nathan, finally, and, you know, having that joy. And obviously, like, getting her 
like being able to move up in school and different things like that. But I mean, you know, there's, I'm sure a lot of things are just feeling like they're crashing all around her when it comes to her uncle and Elizabeth. And we just still don't know what Robert's going to do mm-hmm. uh, since graduating. He might end up actually going to the Mounties. And, you know, she feel, she has feelings for Robert. Even at a young age, you know, you feel strongly when you do find a boy that you like. Oh, you feel girl, strongly. That is one thing I do remember from being about five to eight years old is I uh, remember I was, I, I had several crushes growing up. I will just oh, yeah. admit. Oh yeah. I honestly think I have had fewer <laughs> crushes since I have gotten to the age of dating than I had as an eight-year-old. <laughs> I'm not sure what that yeah, says about I I'm not sure what that says oh, about I'm, me or me I'm my the same age, way. But... I'm the same way. I am the same way. So I could totally see where it is and I don't have any judgment to you at all. Uh but um I could see her running, like not running away, but just like wanting to just get out of Hope Valley, you know, mm-hmm. just get away from her uncle, get away from Elizabeth, get away from Mr. Bouchard and just like go in the woods. Well, I mean, and but then if she you gets lost it, or something. Well, if you think about it, Allie right now, I think you said something about this actually, that kind of. There might have been in a, in a video chat conversation that we had. I don't remember, but uh, my, my, I have very short term memory, guys. Um, You're, I'm that, the same way. Uh, but that Allie at this point might even kind of wonder if Elizabeth won't be with Nathan because of her. You know, that maybe. I did say know, that. Maybe, I did yeah, say that, that. I said that. Maybe that, um, she feels that way. And then if Nathan, if on top of that, if, if, if Allie feels like, Elizabeth is abandoning her and then feels like maybe she's a stumbling block in their relationship. And then Nathan is having to get on to her for doing that. Then Allie very likely feels like if I weren't, it could feel like I'll say that way. uh, could feel like that if she was not there, that they could be together and that everything would be fine so that she's just going to leave and, they can have their life and everybody will be happy and nobody will miss her because obviously she's causing more trouble than anything else. Yeah. Yeah. So. I get, yeah. I mean, and it's your, if she's really spiraling out of cult control with her emotions, like a lot of people do, I've spiraled before I've went down that dark rabbit hole of like, yeah. you know, feel like, you know, she could also start feeling like, you know, with that whole block for her uncle, you know, we don't know how, uh Colleen died mm-hmm. come to fruition maybe we'll get that unless it's kind of one of those things that kind of gets that goes down the crack mm-hmm. but obviously having a dad who abandons you can take a toll on your mentality too where you're just like well oh, yeah. he left me he thought I wasn't good enough to stake around for and then here I am I'm I'm one of these reasons why Elizabeth can't be with my uncle and he's upset because she you know, my uh because Ms. uh miss thatcher won't mrs thornton won't you know date him um and all of this kind of stuff she's gonna feel like you everyone would just be better off without her around and that might, maybe she could even be maybe she would even you know yeah find some because we're, to we're totally just that, theorizing right. here we're totally just yeah this is just theorizing we're not saying like this we're, is this what ellie's feeling but we're just saying yeah like this is you're getting you're getting a look into how we come up with the theories that we come up with um but yeah I mean I right now Allie's feeling it all her emotions Mm -hmm. are going haywire right now her hormones are going haywire her you know her own love life and then her uncle and then everything is just going haywire right now um well I mean the thing about it is Allie knows Nathan is in love with Elizabeth, even though he's oh, never yeah. actually told her that that we know of. He's never well, I mean, really. She did like, say she ke- did keep keep saying because he kept trying to compare what's going on between her, Robert, and Anna to what what was going on with her, Elizabeth, and Lucas. And she's like, it's not the same because she knows it's not the same feeling. She knows she's not in love with Robert, and that mm-hmm. Robert and Anna aren't in love because they're too young. She's not that stupid. She's not that you know. Yeah, I wouldn't say Robert's too young to start start considering it anyway. But 
Um, yeah, but I think also he's still at the age where he doesn't really know what to do. We've seen yeah. him kind of contemplate the Mountie stuff. And now he's doing the, the male, ma- he's being the mailman fill in for Ned. How, how cute was he? <laughs> I grew into Cole. He used to become one of the postables. He's, he's too cute. He is adorable. Uh, but yeah. And, um, and, and, and just quickly, sorry, if y'all don't know who the postables are, go watch Hallmark's uh, show, Signed, Sold, and Delivered. Because it, it is incredible. But yeah, if you don't and know Kevin who the makes Kevin makes a, an appearance in one of the uh, movies. We're not going to tell you which one because we, want you in all, because we want you guys to watch all of them. Yeah. In order to find out which one. That was his first Hallmark movie. Wasn't that was it? his first Hallmark movie. Yep. That's where he got the bug. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, um, but what do you, do you feel like there was really any surprises for you in Nathan's Secret other than the fact that maybe it didn't go into much detail at that point? I wasn't expecting him to be able to get a chance to go in full detail. I knew that that yeah. was going to happen. I knew there was still going to be another conversation they were probably going to have because one, they had it in the middle of town. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I knew Elizabeth's emotions weren't going to even be able to handle a full conversation of it, which we obviously saw. Right. Honestly, I think what shocked me was the fact that nobody was like staring at them. I guess, yeah. And of course, we later find out that it's because the band was playing so loud and they couldn't hear. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that was the only shocking part was that I wasn't I was kind of expecting like the band like you know how like in, whenever somebody does do that and like they catch in between the breaks of the music and the music kind of breaks and like their voice is obviously too loud and that's when everybody just like stops and, like playing goes like the music mm-hmm. stops and every- yeah and, and then like, everybody stops, and, like, stops like, talking and yeah. <laughs> yeah I was kind of expecting yes. that to happen uh, yeah. for some reason uh, but yeah, that was the only thing that I wasn't expecting to happen. That I that was the only thing that I was expecting to happen that didn't happen. I was I wasn't I was expecting it not to be. Um, I was I knew that he wasn't gonna be able to finish everything, uh, which he's, he he should most of it. There's yeah. obviously some details like she didn't like. I don't think I don't think Elizabeth knows why he got suspended or that he even got suspended. Does yeah. she? Because I can't remember if she... I know, I know Bill knows, but I don't know that Elizabeth does. No. I don't think Elizabeth knows. And that'll be a crucial part, too, because she needs to well, know and, why. And that was, interesting. that was interesting to me, that Nathan didn't actually use the word suspension. He said that he was disciplined. Yeah, prior discipline. Yeah. Yeah, so I thought, I thought that was a very interesting choice of words. But no, I mean, we know yeah. just from other previews that there's well, going to be also, conversations. I think the reason why he didn't say that was because he was going to obviously have to tell her why he was suspended and all that kind of stuff. And I think he knew because he had to say his, tell the secret the way that he had to tell it, because she obviously would not let him leave that spot without telling him, telling her something. Yeah. Um, I think, I think the most surprising thing for me was that she didn't know. And like, we thought from the previews, it seemed like, which Hallmark is good at this. Hallmark is great yeah. at twisting previews, but that we were pretty sure that the Canfields knew something because Minnie was like Jack Thornton. You know, how did you miss? Him? How did you lose him? And the way and, she, the way that they made her voice sound, mm-hmm. which was not like how it sounded in the scene, mm-hmm. um, was that she was hinting at her possibly knowing something. Yeah. But ultimately, she didn't. It was just because she heard his name around town. And obviously, the school right. was named after him and everything else. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that was the only thing that we got uh, wrong. And can we just make a note? Joseph has a lot of hats. Yes, he does. <laughs> he's a carpenter. A carpenter. He knows how to blacksmith. He knows how. He's mm-hmm. obviously a preacher. Yep. Wow. Wanting to run a gas station. Um yeah that's that's yeah. really really joseph is an incredible incredible character as y'all have not gone back and listened to our episode on canfields i do encourage you to do that um because they are such a sweet, and natasha sweet family. yeah sweet yeah. beautiful family natasha burnett who plays Minnie, said that she loved our podcast episode of the canfields yeah. so, so 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 if the lady who plays the role is willing to sit there and listen to us y'all need to go listen um but um but I think I think honestly the 
biggest question that we get from people is they're just so worried that the secret is going to drive, like, how is this going to bring them closer together? How could she forgive Nathan for this? And in our, we do an Instagram live on, um, on Instagram. That is brilliant. Guys, sometimes I'm so brilliant. It scares me. Uh, we do an Instagram live on Sunday nights after the episode. And if you have not tuned into the, one of those, I very much encourage you to, because they're insane. I mean, the laughs we get on there and the theories from people and all the little different hashtags. And we've got an episode coming up later this week um, where we kind of mention a few of those hashtags in there. And we've got a special guest that y'all will uh, definitely be seeing more than once on our podcast. But um, that how but our uh one point got brought up and honestly i had complete i will just say i had completely forgotten this um storyline but angie on our um on our instagram live had pointed out that jack once had survival survivor's guilt and i'm like what are you talking about but i think it was season four that um jack's friend doug showed up in town and before we got on um, (laughs) my mom's home that's the reason why they're barking like that Um, but that um, Jack's friend Doug showed up and before we before we got on this uh Morgan and I were on a video chat and she was playing a clip of that and when Doug showed up I just oh, this is going down a rabbit trail I'm sorry but when Doug showed up and he like constable Jack Thornton and Jack turns around and like grabs his punch and throws him to the ground and Elizabeth is like didn't I teach you better than that and Elizabeth's just standing there with this look of shock and like can somebody please tell me what's going on here and she even why did to you, Doug yeah yeah She's why, like, did, why you did you hit him like, why'd you yeah. try to hit him? Like, trying to she do something. Her teacher face, her teacher face was in full force. She's like, why did you do that? <laughs> it was hilarious. Like, I had forgotten. That's why I'm so I looking too. forward to us going back and recapping these seasons after oh, yeah. season eight. Definitely. It is going to be, it is going to be so much fun. But that Doug, Jack had been offered a position in the Northern Territories and he turned it down. And that Doug, took that position he said that uh the superintendent when jack's like what are you doing here he's uh whatever the superintendent's name was that i've drawn blank on right now um offered him that well, position wait. that jack had did he down. turn it wait actually i don't think doug jack said, turned doug, it- yeah doug said that uh superintendent whatever his name was uh offered me the position that you turned down okay okay i was wondering it. back whenever because remember whenever the whole reason why jack came to uh, coal valley, uh, coal valley at the time that it was called coal valley uh it was because of william thatcher uh yeah. needing his little princess to be taken care of um so that's the reason why <laughs> we're never gonna there, get tired of those lines for, guys <laughs> for a second for a second there i was like wondering like did he not go because he was being told that he has to go to Cold Valley or not. But yeah, he Doug said, and I and I quote, uh, I was offered the job that you turned down. Mm-hmm. And, and he go, you're, up, you're, you're, you're good. He, he ended up dying in the Northern Territories. And Jack, I, I, I watched this clip. Um, somebody shared it on Instagram and I will link it in the show notes. But of the clip, where Jack is talking to Doug's mother and he was like, Doug took the assignment. If I had been, if I had taken that assignment, Doug would still be alive. You know, and, and Jack was so torn up by it. Sorry, y'all. I feel like I have an eyelash in my eye and it's driving me. Um, yeah, and Elizabeth was right there sitting next to him. And she was so shocked that he even felt that way because Jack yeah. had not really made it known or clear to her that he was feeling this way about Doug's death. Like she knew that he was heartbroken over the death because he knew that they were really close and like Jack trained him. Um, yeah. And obviously they, they were close and everything by the way that they would joke around and they would talk with one another. And so yeah. like, you know, 
she knew that there was some pain there and there was some grief there, but she didn't really know that there was a survivor's guilt kind of pain yeah. mixed in with that. And you even hear her say like, oh, wow. You know, you could, she obviously didn't speak a whole lot because it was between Jack and Doug's mother. But yeah, I just... And but I think people, that are, people are asking how can how can Elizabeth forgive Nathan for that that he essentially calls Jack's death in the same way that Doug's mother did in the sense of Doug's mother sat there and hugged Jack and was like this is not your fault he wanted to lead those men basically you couldn't have stopped him wild horses couldn't have stopped him from taking this assignment this was something he wanted and, and I'm sorry, he died, I, like, he died with his boots on, per se. Yeah. You know, I mean. And I could be wrong, and th- this is my thinking, but in some places, I feel like a mother's pain and a wife's pain are two totally different things. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, like, for a mother, they literally carried that child for months. Yeah. So they have so I feel like losing a child versus losing your husband are different pains. I'm not saying that Elizabeth has any right to feel pain or feel bad or feel, you know, she's going to have to forgive Nathan. Mm-hmm. Just like uh, Doug's mother. But I don't think Doug's mother really had to think about that. I think she understood how her, how her son thought about the mount about being a mountie oh. the way he looked at these situations the the danger and how he didn't stop him yeah. um you know a mother just knows those things about their children without their children having to say anything about it um and i think also you know elizabeth's gonna have her little grieving moment and she's gonna be like you know what i knew my husband yeah jack i was not gonna be i wasn't gonna be able to stop jack his mother wasn't yeah. gonna be able to stop him Nobody was going to be able to stop Jack from going up to Fort Clay and taking this assignment. Well, I and mean, it wasn't that's a even point in and of itself that Jack didn't have to take that assignment. No, he could have said no. He could have told yeah. him that you know he had responsibilities here in Hope Valley that he had to take care of, and he wasn't going to be able to take a, take that that long of a uh, place off. You know, because it wasn't that long reason, ago. That the he, whole reason he took he it. just got back. He just got back from the Northern Territories. They got married. Because he just got back, and so they were finally able to get their marriage done, and uh, he gets called again. Yep. And with, the only with a why quote, I feel like prestigious position, end quote. He did it for the prestige. No, like not only was it prestigious, but it was he also said considered an honor. Mm-hmm. So that also kind of speaks volume as to how, what kind of mountie Nathan is, which we already know yeah. that Nathan is a great mountie. But for like the rest mm-hmm. of the mounties that feel that way about him, to offer yeah. him the job first, yeah, you know they never they didn't offer the 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 uh, position to Jack first. They offered it yeah. to Nathan. Well, and I mean, the, the, yeah. go ahead. And plus, like, I think one of the reasons that helped Elizabeth uh, kind of go along with it and not pull at jack about it was because jack insisted that the only thing that was going to hurt possibly uh hurt was him his throat after yelling at them for so long mm-hmm. you know he said he's like there's no, no danger i'm just training them at this training center like what happened to jack was not in the was, line of duty yeah. it was but it was not like under fire it's, it's almost considered it's almost considered an act of god because it was a natural thing that happened. Like nobody right. would have been able to stop this landslide from happening. Right. It wasn't like he was shot. It wasn't like he, you know, any of that. It was yeah. a natural disaster thing that nobody could have stopped. Yeah. Well, and I mean, just to think about that, you know, first of all, Nathan's Nathan's suspension was totally stupid anyway, because he was literally the hero of that story and very likely saved extra lives by capturing those cattle wrestlers himself so i mean well i think it all goes i don't even think it really has to do with any of that i think a lot of it is because hardgraves got had let the power go to his head mm-hmm. and all he saw was the fact that nathan took the order took that uh situation in his own hands instead of following uh hardgraves hardgraves order and became the hero of that situation instead yeah. of it being you know a regular you know act of well like active order yeah you know 
well, and Hardgraves we know, didn't get. We know the, Jack yeah. well enough. We know Jack well enough to know Jack would have done the same thing that yeah. Nathan did in that situation, and also that Jack died. Then they say he saved two recruits. Um, as he yeah. when he died, he died because he was pushing two recruits out of the way, and Jack, like Elizabeth. Like not saying she doesn't need Jack. I don't mean it in that way. But Elizabeth has other people surrounding her. Allie, literally, if she lost Nathan, she when, would have nobody. And Jack, have nobody. yeah, Jack, if given the choice, Jack would have given his life freely for Nathan. In yeah, I think I said sense. this. I think that I said this in the episode that we just recorded for uh, uh, that we're going to be publishing after this. I said, revived or whatever, and he was given the chance to choose whether to die again the same way that he died or um, let Nathan take his spot the way they was intended to, get, to go. He would not have let that happen. He would have died. Yeah. He would have, he would yeah. have freely died because no way was he, was he going to take a child's only parent and only yeah. the of family away from them. Yeah. Because he knows what it's like to have your father taken away from you in that kind of a situation because his mm-hmm. father died as a Mountie in action. Yep. And that was one of the yep. driving forces for Jack. He wanted to be like his dad. Mm-hmm. So, but unlike yeah. Nathan, I, I mean, unlike Jack, I mean, unlike Jack, Allie doesn't have anyone else. Jack, at least yeah. after his father died, still had his mother. Mm-hmm. But Allie and Elizabeth have- still had her family, still had her Hope Valley family. Yeah, and Allie would have been in an orphanage. And I think so. that Elizabeth is slowly. I think Elizabeth will slowly realize that, and she'll take yeah. in all the circumstances, and she's going to find herself forgiving Nathan really easily, and telling Nathan, "Do mm-hmm. not like no longer will you feel guilty for this. Mm-hmm. I don't yeah. want you to ever feel guilty about this because not only do I forgive you." But I know for a fact there would be no question that Jack would not would not have done this all over again just to ensure that J- that Allie didn't grow up an orphan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, guys, and that I'm and sorry. I think when she it, finds out, I think when she finds out how he was suspended and why, she would also tell him like Jack would have done the same thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. I know that they never met, but it still blows my mind that Elizabeth and Nathan were probably at Fort Clay at the same time. <laughs> I was like, I cannot wrap my brain around that. I'm yeah, sorry. We don't, know how long, we don't know how long before his actual suspension and how long it took from the suspension to the uh, to the transfer that he was in Fort Clay before he moved to Fort Simpson. So they could have easily crossed paths yeah. and not know about it. Because obviously when you're newlywed, you're all, your eyes are only on your... So she could have walked right past Nathan, not even knowing he was there, because she was just so transfixed on uh on uh, which is hard to do with those steely blue eyes. (laughs) (laughs) Gotta get my fan out from this uh, episode that I right, yeah. (laughs) But it's a full circle moment. It's a full circle moment with uh with the whole Doug situation and all of that. Yeah, so. it's 100% a full circle moment. And for Elizabeth, honestly, I feel like this is actually going to kind of force her to finally let Jack go. Somebody pointed out in the comments of why, like, why would she even be in courtship with Lucas if she's not even willing to take her rings off? That to me, and even like, you know, we saw them almost kiss again in this episode and for Lucas to call it off. And somebody pointed out in the comments of her Instagram live that, um, if for a guy to call a kiss off, either he knows she's not into him or he's not into her. Honestly, I think he knows she's not there yet. Yeah. You know, and I think, I mean, Lucas is a gambler. Yeah. He knows how to read people, but he also know he also plays the odds. And sometimes you win some, sometimes you lose some. Right now he is playing the odds, knowing he's very likely to lose Elizabeth, but yeah. he's willing to take that chance. Yeah. Uh, and it's like I said, I mean, like I I said to people, I said, if you really think about it, like poker and all that is really, literally a game of luck. Mm-hmm. But what ki- what makes it a kicker is like if you're able to read people. Yeah. You are you're able to call people on their bluff. 
mm-hmm. you're able to look at that like some people have ticks some people have things that they do whenever they have a good hand or when they have a bad hand you know they don't realize that they have it but you know other people who are really good at reading that uh like for instance lucas like if i was to see what was kind of going in lucas's head whenever he analyzes or like whenever he really transfixed himself watching elizabeth's interactions with nathan he could probably see like every time they have a conversation she has to take a deep breath mm-hmm. or do you think you that's know, why we see lucas always seeing their interaction because he I does do. know how to read people i, I do thought about it from that angle before i thought about it oh, from i've that always angle. seen it like that i've always seen him just you know he's I thought about it from the angle of that he's observing it, but I've never thought of it from the angle of him being a gambler. Oh yeah, I've seen. Yeah, that's what I've always. That just kind of adds a whole new depth to it that I haven't. Yeah, and I, I, I've always kind of seen it that way because I've always kind of reminded myself he's a gambler, and whenever you're a gambler, you kind of learn the tricks of the trade. You kind of learn to watch people's uh, body language. Yeah. Um, you know, different things like that. And there's a significant difference between Elizabeth's body language around Lucas and her body language around Nathan. And then her body well, language around people like Lee and Rosemary. Yeah. Well, and I was just thinking about this too. And okay. Like literally what I, I think it was you that I text. Um, like literally exactly. into the episode, episode, good grief. Episode last night. Episode came out because I was mixing the words episode last night. That came out as episode. So, <laughs> Lord. oh Lord, guys, we bring our own entertainment, or at least I do. Okay, I bring my own entertainment. But anyway, of the episode, where the heck was I going? With? It's gonna come out my nose. Um. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I hate it when this happens. Okay. Her Google box. <laughs> I mean, my I had a direction I was headed. I know. I know. My, words, my brain was going faster than my tongue. <laughs> so <laughs> I think we all have have done that before plenty of times. I know I have. Oh, my Lanta. What was I even talking about? (laughs) 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 Just start talking about something so I can compose myself over here. Okay. um, (laughs) Okay, so like... um, I can't even think. <laughs> oh, word. Okay. I feel like we know there's going to be more conversations between Nathan and Elizabeth because we know from that preview <clears throat> that she's in his office and they're having a very deep conversation when he tells her true love is always worth fighting for. So we know there's going to be conversations between the two of them. And while we're talking about conversations, can we just mention the conversation between um, the conversations Rachel Rachel and Christopher? Well, that too. But I was thinking about uh, Nathan and Lucas. Oh, yeah. At that particular time. The fact that Nathan went to Lucas and said you know he uh he's asking basically why Christopher's so angry at Lucas and Lucas is like I don't owe you an explanation and Nathan's like no you don't owe me an explanation but I just want you to know I'm not giving up on Elizabeth just yet and what Lucas said blew my mind because he said you can do whatever you want but you better be sure you have Elizabeth and Allie's best interest at heart not your own and he I starts going off I'm not gonna lie. I did not. Li- I mean, I didn't really care that he brought up Elizabeth, but I didn't really like that he brought through Allie in his face. That's one part I did not like. I didn't. I didn't really understand that, honestly. It's because he's been seeing, like he, like he just got through watching Allie's sad face sitting on that that stack oh, of yeah. lumber. So he's only got that going through his mind that yeah. Allie's upset right now. 
But mm-hmm. there's also the point that Lucas doesn't know that they were all four were fixing to go on a dinner date before his mm-hmm. mother showed up. If you think about it, Lucas had no clue that was a date. Yeah. And yeah. another thing is, is that, you know, I feel like, you know, that was almost him poke, kind of doing a jab at Nathan's parenting. As if he doesn't, yeah. as if Nathan doesn't put Allie as a reason why he doesn't do, as a reason he doesn't, like, Allie is the sole reason why he even stayed in Hope Valley. If it wasn't for Allie. Reason. Yeah, part of the reason why he even stayed in Hope Valley was because he he saw Allie finally wanting to pr- put down roots somewhere, and that meant a lot, mm-hmm. and he knew it meant a lot. And then, of course, the other one was Elizabeth, obviously, but, hey, Lucas can't say nothing, because he full-on told his mother the reason why he even stayed in Hope Valley was also because of Elizabeth. With Elizabeth. Mm-hmm. Now, yes, I understand uh, he doesn't have kids, but I mean, if he had a kid that was acting the same way about Allie, would he really be able to point fingers at Nathan right now? Yeah. I mean, don't point I mean, fingers where you don't have the experience at, you know? Like, well, and like they have no idea of the conversation. They have no way of knowing the conversations that have gone on between Nathan and Allie. But when has Nathan ever talking to Allie been anything but respectful of Elizabeth and Lucas both? Yeah, I mean, he even straight up defended them and said, "Don't we like don't yeah. wait, like, we need to be happy for them?" Yeah, We're, we should be happy yeah. that they're happy. That that's all that matters. Yeah. I have to say that, like, that was kind of a. I was surprised to see that scene, but I also have to say that props to Nathan for being willing to tell Lucas to his face, "I'm going to try to steal your girl." <laughs> You know, I'm just saying that takes some guts to walk up to somebody and on his property them. too. Yeah, on, like his on his turf. on his on his turf, yeah. and yeah. be like, "Look, Betty, you know, I'm sorry, but I love her, and I'm not just going to give up on this. I'm not going to take this line down." But I mean, that to me was an extremely telling scene because Lucas showed in that he's not willing to fight for Elizabeth, and. Like, well, that, me, I guess because he doesn't feel like Lucas is kind of a feminist. Hmm. He has a feminist mentality. Yeah. Um, which I'm not d- dish- like I'm not cramping on or anything. You know, I'm kind of glad he's got that that little bit of a mentality. I guess he's just kind of he knows that Elizabeth is going to make her choice for their no matter what Nathan does and no matter what Lucas does. Yeah. I think he's got well, that mentality that. She's going to make her choice uh, yeah. no matter what Nathan does and no matter what he does. I think for me that like that's something that Lucas knows is important to Elizabeth though because she's told yeah. him that she's told him that that love is worth fighting for and I know for me personally like when I was saying that that takes guts to go up to somebody and say hey I'm going to try to steal you know just blatantly to their face tell them hey I'm going to try to steal your girl. I know for me like, I've never actually dated somebody, but I have been in love before. And I remember that feeling. Like, do you have any idea? Like, I was best friends. Like, me and his mom were best friends before me and him even started talking. And it's like, do you have any idea how hard it is to tell your best friend, essentially, that you're in love with her son? Like, I mean, I was sick to my stomach to talk to her, but I was like, this is something I had got to do. And of course she started, like, she was so concerned because I was like, so out of it trying to talk to her. And then I said that she started getting tickled to it. I thought you were going to tell me something I didn't already know, you know? So, I mean, everybody knew it, but yeah. like, but for me, I, I know he loved me. There was no doubt of that in my mind, but I felt like he always felt like, I deserved something more than he could give me and he didn't want to hold me back so I've been like and again this goes back to personal preference and I do believe that is a lot of why people are team Nathan or team Lucas is personal preference but personally I've been loved enough to be let go I want to be loved enough for somebody to fight for me I want somebody to love me enough to say I want you like you are my choice you are the one person that I want to complete my life and you complete me nobody else can complete me the way that you do yeah so I I had to go with Elizabeth and Nathan on this one that and again that's just my personal experience but well also 
to be let go and I want to be loved enough to be fought for. And yeah, if you ever I mean, listen the same to this way. podcast, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, but. I mean, I've, I've went through that same experience as well. And I, I think we both shared that experience um, before on FaceTime or whatever. Mm-hmm. And so I, I totally get where you're coming from. I think another reason why he said that was maybe because of how Elizabeth told him that she was not going to continue to pr- pursue things with Nathan. She said, and I quote, I can't give him what he wants. Mm-hmm. And I think that that was kind of maybe going through his mind too. And that's the reason why he wasn't saying a bunch. Uh, he wasn't saying a bunch as far as fighting. It's because Elizabeth, in his mind, Elizabeth made his cho- her choice, mm-hmm. and she doesn't feel like she can give Nathan what he wants. That does make sense. Yeah. So that might also be a part of it, but I think also it could be because, you know. Yeah. Also, and I mean, I feel like and uh, also uh, Lucas can get a little cocky. Mm-hmm. He can get a little bit, you know. Yeah stick his nose in the air a little bit um okay i'm sorry you just made me think (laughs) rabbit trail but a little house on the prairie quote right here guys well if you stick your nose up in the air with me nelly it's gonna get punched I, I would love to hear Allie that. say that to somebody. I would love to hear Allie say that to somebody that sticks their nose up at her. Yeah. I could see it. But, I could see it. Yeah. But before we started off, on, uh, before we started off on um, that, you had mentioned Rachel and Christopher. Can we just say it that Rachel and Christopher have had a deeper conversation in the few days, literally, they have known each other than Lucas and Elizabeth have had in three years. Just saying. Well, I, w- I will give them props. They came this close to having a deep conversation in episode eight. And he chose that that phone call was more important at that time than that. It's, it's almost like he it's almost like he wants to. I don't but think maybe, they really can, honestly. I don't feel like they're going to. I don't think they're going to be able to connect. I don't think so either. And I think also, I think it's also kind of maybe can go back to how he was raised. Yeah. You know, we don't know how he was raised. We don't know the kind of father he had, an example he had. He might not have a parental figure that um, taught him or that he was able to learn how to open up in that way. In that way. Mm-hmm. Um, I could be wrong, but I mean, I do want to see him do that that with someone. If it's not Lucas, yeah. but I do want it, the person that he maybe does end up with. I want to see that emotion come out because, you know, I I mean, Chris is a fantastic actor. Yeah, and I want to see him go. I want to see him do that. Go down that yeah. road with his character. Well, and. So, Honestly, I feel like a lot of people are really concerned about Lucas from this. Honestly, I think he's going to come out stronger. Oh, it. yeah. I don't think, I don't think it's going to break I think him. he needs it. I think he needs a reality check in the way that he sees yeah. love and sees I relationship agree. and romance. Right now, he's got his literature and his romance books and his romance novels and obviously having a mother who is an editor, you know, all of that kind of stuff has been so deeply sewn in, into him. Yeah. That I think it's going to take um, this failed relationship um, between him and Elizabeth that's going to rip yeah. some of that out of him. And I think it's going to make him stronger, though. I think it's going to make him a better person. Well, I mean, it's just, but- like, it's just like his parents splitting up. He's going to have a rough time with it. But it's like what Aaron said. Aaron says that they take it like a champ. Yeah. So, um, as much I wrote as, down as much as someone can have, to, as much as somebody can take something like that as like a champ, I'm sure. Right. Um, I wrote down what Rachel said to Christopher because I mean, so many people were saying this is basically she's saying what Elizabeth is feeling right now. But yeah. uh, Rachel said, "The closer we get to someone, people we like, anyway, the more we can't stand the idea of losing them." And the only way to stop that from happening is to keep our distance. 
And he asked, yeah. well, what do you do about that? And she said, take a chance. And that is, that is one thing that Elizabeth has not done with Nathan yet. And that I believe she still needs to do is to take that chance. But I think this secret coming out is going to make her process things with Jack. Because we mentioned the rings thing earlier. She still hasn't let go of Jack. Not really. She's still... No. Um, and it's like people have pointed out, we haven't really seen her grieve. Yeah. Because we, pre- <laughs> we skipped. We skipped like nine months because we found out she was pregnant at the end. We get the Christmas episode where she's pregnant and she delivers Jack. And then four months later, we get season six. Mm-hmm. So we haven't, re- and we and season six is pretty much about her. I mean, we got her grieving a little bit in little moments of there and here and there of her like talking about how she didn't imagine herself doing this alone and, right. you know, different things like that. And obviously giving the advice that she gave to Clara before their wet for her, before her and Jesse's wedding. We've seen little nods. Sorry. We saw little nods of her, you know, but overall, we haven't really gotten to witness her really grieve Jack. Yeah. Fully. Yeah. And um, I, a lot, I think, and part I think of that could be. going to make her do that. Yeah, because part of her, I think she, she allowed herself to really sink into raising baby Jack. Mm-hmm. And putting, make, putting that in the forefront of her, ma- her mind and putting the grieving of Jack's in the back. Yeah. Well, and, and I think this is going to be what's going to allow her to move on because up to this point, she hasn't been really ready to move on, which is why it's taking her so long. understandable. Like, yeah, but which is why it's taking her so long with either one of these guys to make a commitment is because she's yeah. never truly been able to move on. But I think yeah. this is going to make her process things about Jack. And I think we mentioned either on our live or in a video chat that perhaps this would make her start going through like some memorabilia per se from hers and Jack's relationship and that perhaps she would find that letter that I said that left for her yeah I said that and Casey and, got so shocked she's like oh, I didn't think about the letter <laughs> yeah I was like yeah, yeah that letter because like she he pretty much didn't even say a whole bunch like literally the, the majority of the letter was pretty much talking to her about you know opening her heart again and opening herself up to love again yeah that he would want her to be happy and mm-hmm. not be grieving him her the rest of her life right um Um, i think that that's kind of what i think that's going to be what makes her willing to move on though is that she's finally going to process yeah because i think it was kind of like what also helped jack do that was because i think he saw how his mother did Mm -hmm. his mother i don't think she ever moved on and everything like that now he wanted that. that he didn't want uh her to go through the same thing that his mother went through when it came to closing herself off from love he didn't want that for her. Um, and I think that that's going to be like a jolt to the heart for Elizabeth. She's going to be like, okay. Mm-hmm. She needs yeah. to hear from Jack right now. She needs to hear from him. Um, yeah. Cause I, I did say in the last live that uh, the last live, and even I think in the last, this last podcast that we did that um, whenever we were talking about the Canfields that I would have liked to have seen uh, Elizabeth kind of have a God moment. Mm-hmm. brought through her uh, maybe a conversation between her and Joseph yeah but now I think the closest thing that uh, Elizabeth has to a real god moment would be hearing from Jack yeah I agree so, um I think that, that would be a really good point turning point yeah uh right before we got on here to record this particular episode I had opened Instagram and um I think the account is at Hallmark is Caroline three, but um, she posts some really good stuff, but she had posted some pictures of Nathan and Elizabeth from the cabin fight scene. And then Nathan and Elizabeth obviously standing out in the middle of the road um, when Nathan's secret was revealed with the caption full circle. And I was, it just struck me. I'm like, wow. But obviously we know that Nathan at that point had feelings for Elizabeth. I mean, that was, very clear (laughs) um as he said i wasn't trying to hide it um but that uh that that knowing that he knows that jack died because he took his position even though that's not nathan's fault jack could anybody could have had that position not just jack i mean anyone's gonna feel that anyone anyone's gonna feel like i feel like that's kind of Anybody that goes through what Nathan had to go through with finding out that Jack took his place and died because of it, 
I think anyone would get survivor's guilt after that, especially yeah. knowing that he left behind a wife and baby. Mm-hmm. You know, I feel like anybody would have that. Yeah, but that. Um, why am I having such a hard time holding off? You're basically going to say that you know, going into this and obviously her putting herself in danger. Yeah, thank you. That she did. Um, that that um. We, we can kind of understand even more why Nathan would be so protective of Elizabeth because he feels like I couldn't say Jack I want to make sure you're okay you know and I think that became I think that was that's part of who Nathan is as a person that's part of who Nathan is as a Mountie that's part of who Nathan is because of what happened to Jack and that's part of what Nathan is because he has fallen in love with Elizabeth and that uh, you just see that emotion coming out in him and again props to Kevin McGarry and Aaron Krako both on their performance in that and I loved Kevin's like I think you posted this on your Insta story Morgan of Kevin's response to Aaron about uh him being such a great scene partner and he's like yeah I loved how uh how natural you said it was to yell at me in the middle of the street. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, oh yeah. I, I think I have it. it. You're such a pro. Like when you said that yelling at me in the street was surprisingly easier than you thought, dot, 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 almost came naturally to you. Yeah. <laughs> so. You can tell they have a great friendship and I love that. But <laughs> um. Hang on, I can't see it. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Um. Yeah. There. And then there who, who else agrees with this one? Nathan. <laughs> Nathan, how's your <laughs> season going? <laughs> Matt. <Matt's laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, me and Morgan had this conversation the other day. I'm just cheesy enough to prefer like the old Batman and Wonder Woman and stuff to the stuff that's coming out today, but that's just me. I'm Marvel and- fan. Yeah, and and can we all Marvel just? All admit, I mean, the old Batman show that was it does not come any cheesier than that. But can we all just admit that Robin's expressions were the best part of that? Oh, which brings me back to I am flinging my uh, headphone wire everywhere. <laughs> Can't jump over my headphone wires here. <laughs> school while we were doing computer class I would just be like yeah (laughs) not paying attention but that my top favorite line from the episode was Nathan saying what do they not lock the doors in the Granville prison (laughs) and walking out the door (laughs) he literally just rode all the way to Buxton to capture this guy delivers him where he's supposed to be comes back is trying to talk to Allie about what happened bless his heart he's trying the man is trying and Florence comes out there Constable Grant you know he's like just a minute she's like Nathan you know just got a what you know I just got some important news so he goes in there and she shows him that that prisoner that you just captured has escaped again and he's like Guys, how hard is it? <laughs> again, again, it's making me think of You had one job. Put the dude in the prison and lock it away. Literally, when I called my mom today to tell her about this episode, I said they must have hung the keys outside on the peg outside the cell door. Which if anybody knows the Andy Griffith show, they know that is something from that. And also there's an episode of the Andy Griffith show where um Barney keeps accidentally letting these guys escape and Andy's like Barney I'm not gonna have a chance to go after the other two if I have to keep catching these same two over and over again so I mean it's just hilarious to me to see like that's the type of stuff that flashes through my mind and obviously my mom watching the same stuff I watched we got a good laugh out of that but um but yeah Yeah, I felt felt for Nathan yeah (laughs) 
I did too, but I'm glad that Kevin's finally kind of showing his comedy chops a little bit. Yeah. I'm ready for more though. I, I, I can't get enough. And I don't think we could ever really get enough of Kevin McGarry. Just, you know, that's why I love his camp watching his cameos. Cause it reminds you just how funny and just like, it's like I said on uh, somebody's Instagram post. I said his mind is almost like Robert Downey Jr.'s and Ke- and Jim Carrey's. You want to look inside. <laughs> you want to look inside, but at the same time, you're almost scared to, because <laughs> it's like you don't know what you're about to see up in there. Oh, so. word. again, again, you're making me think of a personal experience. Um, when I went to Mount Airy for the movie that I was working on, but I went to Mount Airy for the uh, Kickstarter party because we had three consecutive Kickstarter parties going on and this was 2020. Um, but there was one going on in Indiana. Well, our producer, Court Howell, he lives in Indiana. So he was going to be at that one. And then another one was in, I think, Burbank, California. Well, Stark, Howell and Greg Shell both live in California so they were going to be at that one so they're calling me going can you go to Mount Airy (laughs) and represent us over there we're like I'm like sure you know they know I'll take any excuse to go to Mount Airy so I went up there for that well I'm walking around town picking up stuff for the uh for the party of like businesses donating stuff for door prizes and blah 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 you know handing out business cards you know inviting people to the party whatever and um, I was down at the little Wally's service station thing there, and I had a box full of stuff that they had donated. And the lady said, where'd you park? And I told her, and it was, I don't know, half a mile, a mile up the road. It wasn't really that far. But uh, she was like, if you'll hang on for just a minute, our, they, they did squad car tours there. And uh, she said, if you'll hang on for just a minute, our guys about done for the day he's on his last run for the day when he gets back he'll drive you to your car and I'm like great <laughs> you know because I had a box full of stuff yeah. so I just hung around and waited for him and so he picked me up I told him where my car was so we're we're riding to, to my car he's asking me where I'm from what I'm doing in town you know whatever chit chat and, and I told him I was from Georgia and what I was up there for and his eyes got big and he's like you came up from Georgia to work at to work this event and he was like wow you must be really nice and I went people think that but that's just because they don't know what goes on in my head (laughs) like okay I am not touching that (laughs) Gary you're supposed to say thank you you're supposed to say thank you why'd you have to say that (laughs) because I'm not a normal human being okay Let's just say this. If Kevin ever asks you that question, you're definitely give him that answer, and I guarantee you he will fire us on the back. (laughs) Uh, Chris might too. They might both gang up on you. I I always say that sarcasm is my first language and English is my second. Um, Unfortunately, my wit does not work that quickly the majority of the time. Only on occasion does it. but I mean if people only knew that I mean anybody that knows me knows I talk a lot I'm a very talkative person if if people only knew that I only say maybe half of what goes through my brain (laughs) y'all better be glad I had that much of a filter okay I'm just saying (laughs) oh my gosh Morgan is learning things about me she didn't want to know. (laughs) Oh, no, Atlanta. Um, But I think to get back to so we can uh, kind of get out of this rabbit hole. Yeah. (laughs) Um, um, But what? It's interesting to me to go back to uh, Nathan and Lucas's conversation. We know there's going to be another uh, conversation between the two of them, and I'm really curious as to what that's going to be. Yeah, because Kevin and Chris's uh, 
reaction to that and like how they talked about that was definitely intriguing yeah it was so. um and if, if y'all don't know what we're talking about um star watch byline um, on instagram yeah on instagram posted a clip from a um from an interview with the two of them and they are saying that um there is another scene like that with lucas and nathan um okay, now, I remember so kevin that said that the only kevin said the only reason why he told uh, uh told uh lucas the only reason why nathan told lucas to save it was that he was just talking about money yeah he asking he, he asked him about his financial situation yeah he was trying to give him advice <laughs> Kevin's words, not ours. That was his tweet yeah, on Twitter. I, I have to, I have to say, this was the first time I have ever found myself applauding. Like I love Lucas, don't get me wrong, yeah. but this is the first time I've ever found myself applauding him when he came back at Nathan with "Save It" at the end yeah. of that scene. That yeah. was like I was full saying that was moment. very cool. I loved that was it. very good. A lot of full circle moments happening. Yeah, a lot of them. And yeah. can we just say that see episode nine, well, season nine is going to be good too, I hope. But um, that episode nine is going to be mind blowing because, like, for me, there are several things in the preview that stick out to me. First of all, Lucas and Elizabeth, when Lucas is saying, and it's, again, just to recap, guys, this is the preview for episode nine that I'm talking about. Um, but that Lucas is asking her, what did you say when Nathan told you that he loved you? But the fact that they're standing outside Elizabeth's house having this conversation, we have still yet to see Lucas now, go, he inside. Might go inside. He might go inside. He might. We're just saying that, as, that from what we've com- seen. You know, from what we're saying, he might go, she might invite him in because it's going to be, I, I feel like that's going to be a pretty heavy conversation. Um, well, she's invited would, him in before. That's true. So, I don't know. That's true. But that, that particular scene sticks out to me. And then the one, the one I'm the most looking forward to, because this is going to, I'm going to die laughing. I can just go ahead and tell you is yeah. the bachelor bachelorette party where they're doing the blindfold game where she has to choose the the women are choosing the man they're meant to be with just by holding their hands now this one keyword keyword meant to be with meant to be with. it doesn't matter if you're in a relationship with someone or not mm-hmm. it's not choosing the person you're with see if you could choose the part like if you could tell the the person you're with's hands uh compared to other people no it's picking the person you like you're meant to be with by touching their hand and you also have to take into consideration lucas and elizabeth have held hands before twice several times yeah several times nathan and elizabeth have only touched fingers Mm -hmm. once their fingers once and it was over a book it was just Mm -hmm. So this electric, like it was literally like an electric shock or something, the way they drew apart real quick. Yeah. Like, uh, but I mean, you know, it's that electricity that's going to make her yeah, choose Nathan of right course. there. Yeah. And I mean, I'm sorry, but just the pictures that we have seen from this, from this scene of Elizabeth standing there with a blindfold in her hand, like, uh, and Fiona's Lucas. behind her with the same face. They're both yes, looking at just Lucas. Like, in shock and nathan's standing there like um he's like transfixed on elizabeth carson is looking at uh nathan and lucas is looking at the floor while both with that Fiona little knowing and elizabeth- smirk that he always has when he watches nathan and elizabeth let's just throw that out there yep. yep. so i mean it's this is, this is the writing's on the wall interesting guys. episode the writing is on the wall and lucas himself knows it but also i don't know about you but i know it's also in the preview that uh joseph asks nathan if he's okay because he said that he's like nathan you're awful quiet tonight and nathan says this one of them days and someone pointed out that carson looked concerned for nathan Mm -hmm. so i wonder if they're if they're gonna have another conversation or if maybe even joseph will beat carson to it and have a conversation with nathan i would love to see i want joseph to be the new pastor of Valley. Uh, 
we to. need him there. We need Joseph as the new pastor. Bug. I'm just saying. A bug I'm is just saying. Yeah. Sorry. But we uh, we are yeah. so excited that we called this Abby. We uh, nailed it. I'm so excited. Again, high five, girl. But um and I can't we wait if we were so if we were to ever to get to have Kevin on here, I'm gonna be so happy to be able to be like, we got your secret right. Yeah. <laughs> well that that and like after the uh after the season ends and we're we won, we won, we won. We won. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but to just you know, but to just talk to him about I mean, and again, guys, we're theorizing the likelihood of getting any of them on here is, you know, slim. It's possible, but it's slim. But um, that it would be really neat to get to talk to him about Nathan's, um, just Nathan's growth since he his came His journey, to his Hope. character yeah. development, his relationship with Allie, his relationship with Bill, his relationship with Elizabeth. You know, mm-hmm. uh, I would love to see like if they were like t- to like pick his brain about how it felt to tell Chris off, <laughs> <laughs> and then be on the receiving end of him telling him right back. And then, yeah. of course, like if there was any like I want to know if Jada's scene with the inside the jail with the cup was improvised because I could see those two brainstorming that idea. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So, um, one thing that. I think I wear this. Um, sorry, I like had the perfect words in my head, and words you know, are not I, sticking. I'm shocked head. that we haven't gotten an ET online interview yet, because I yeah. feel like this would be a really great interview to have with them. But maybe, maybe they're waiting until the finale. Possibly, yeah. Um, but yeah, just Nathan's whole journey through this. See, see these seasons has been incredible and oh now I remember what I was gonna say uh, if y'all watched our episode on Nathan's Secret which my mom and I were talking about this earlier that one has like 500 plus views on it so y'all were definitely interested in that subject I mean who wasn't but if y'all watched that you know that I like kind of accidentally started saying it and then on purpose finished it because that's just me of saying what is Lucas's secret and at this point I'm really starting to wonder I'm like that little mess up that little blooper in that episode I'm starting to think that's not so unrealistic at this point because there is obviously connection there is something going on between him and and Christopher because Christopher said and I quote Unless you want to join me in in uh join me in this mud, but it looks like you but already, already are. It. Mm-hmm. it looks like you already are, and just the way that he talks to Lucas, he he downright pretty much demanded in a new room, acting as if oh, he yeah. had no he didn't have to have any. Respect. Have you found me a bigger room yet? Yeah, yeah like, I mean, he was, he was acting he's, very top. He's not having then, any respect for Nathan and the right coin now. Trip. I mean, Lucas right now. He's not having any respect for Lucas right now, and it's obviously like in in this scene, he downright was about to tackle Lucas and try and kill him for you know hiring his dad back and everything like that yeah. and I love that I, I let's just say I love he, see, hearing Gowan gush about the fact that his son oh, no. called I, him I, dad. I melted that was one of those I things melted. That I melted I was just that like was one of those things that I had to really catch the second time because I was so overwhelmed with other stuff smile, but his, that, like, melted oh, me. that melted me that too. melted me that melted me oh my word but back to oh. the secret or whatever, but I could just tell that there's something. And like, we obviously see that he, that Rachel was being a good influence on him because he returned Lee's pocket watch. Mm-hmm. That was uh, which so I sweet. Love. That was so sweet. Yeah. And then them missing each other. Like, they, they, are, they are like very quickly becoming a favorite with me. I'm just oh, yeah. Saying, they are so cute. Oh, yeah. My mom says that she could just see basically, like, you have to understand, me and my mom know the formula when it comes to homework. Mm-hmm. They're gonna go. They're gonna get really good with their relationship, and next thing you know, Nathan's gonna nab him with this car. Mm-hmm. Bill or Nathan? I'm leaning more towards Bill because I feel like Bill's really taking this on. By the yeah. way that he was talking to Gowan about it, uh, they might do it together. Obviously, because they he's the judge and uh, Nathan's mounting. <clears throat> but um, yeah. 
And that's another thing that, that, you know, that, you know, he's keeping a secret. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think that there's definitely something that Lucas and, and Christopher. Well, and like Nicole sent us something earlier and guys, y'all tell us your thoughts on this. I mean, yeah, we want to hear from you guys too. All the, all the theories, like we're fixing to go into the heart to heart with the Hardys thing. And every week we want to know y'all's thoughts. And if you're going to message them to us, try to message them to the, um, to the podcast Instagram, which again is linked below. That way it's just easy. We don't lose track of them because um, that way we can both have access to them. We don't lose track of them. Um, but that some people are theorizing that somehow or another Lucas had something to do or was involved with Jack's death because of and the reasoning behind that. And Nicole Smith was the one that sent a screenshot. So I'm assuming it was from Facebook um that she sent these but um that people were theorizing that because of Christopher's remark about Lucas being in the mud and that when Lucas first came into town apparently his shoes were muddy um so I don't know I I don't really see how they could be if it was a mudslide if it was a mudslide I would see the connection but it's a landslide yeah so of course, this is also TV things. land. Yeah, that's this true. is also TV land. Um, but, but I'm kind of going, the way. I, hmm. One thing I'm going to come back to is the fact that he had a call with someone. I don't know if it was the woman that he had a connection to in season six or season seven, whichever one that hmm. was coming out of, where he said, uh, "You were right. Hope Valley is the perfect place." Hmm. So obviously he has a connection to someone who had had, had already had a connection. Had connections, with yeah. Um, and who knows? Maybe Christopher has a connection with someone. Yeah. Honestly, what, like I think we played around with the idea of maybe possibly uh, Christopher's mom was the one that he was having that connection with, but I wasn't sure if we debunked that. No, yeah, somebody said that it, that maybe that that maybe Christopher was that Lucas was involved with uh, Christopher's mom and all that kind of stuff, but she's kind of husband or whatever. Um, yeah. I, I don't think, picture but, Lucas being but that, that still But that still doesn't mean that they don't share a connection when it comes to that either. Maybe the person yeah. that they both, maybe they know both, or, you know, it could be just all kinds of, there's so many yeah. de- theories that we could go down to when it comes to how, or yeah. how, like how Lucas and Christopher know each other. Because we've got the coin finger trick that Lucas showed Cody in season six that Christopher did. Then obviously the remarks that they've been having, like him just demanding a new room. And then of course now this right. with the, you know, join me in the mud. Oh, uh, it looks like you've already, you're already in it. Um, so there's definitely something there and somebody said this and I can see why they're frustrated, but at the same time, it's like uh, totally different. Somebody was like, uh, team Nathan are such a, but are such a bunch of hypocrites because they're, they are saying that Lucas is keeping a secret while defending Nathan for his secret. Because we already knew what Nathan's secret was though. We knew it involved uh, Fort, uh, Fort Clay. We knew that it had uh, involvement with Fort Clay. We didn't know how yeah. substantial it was connected to uh, Elizabeth because the writers didn't have to have it make it. They could have tricked us. They could have pulled a fast one on us, making us think that it had something to do with Fort Clay but didn't have anything to do with Jack. They could have switched this so many different ways. But we know nothing about... There's, we just think that there's something going on between Lucas and Christopher. That yeah. Lucas has a secret that he's not saying. But... Just because someone hasn't seen her doesn't mean that that person has anything like just because just because Lucas is carrying a secret does not automatically mean that Elizabeth deserves to know that secret. Right. Yeah. And it doesn't Uh mean that just because like, yes, I get it. Her husband died at Fort Clay. Mm -hmm. And yes, it turns out Nathan's secret does have something to do with Jack. But it so easily could have not involved her at all. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. sometimes you don't have to have absolute you know some people don't always have to don't always deserve to know your secrets yeah I think that's one thing and I think we've already said this in this episode but that um sorry guys when if I draw a blank on that sometimes we have so many lives 
and video chats and recording more than one episode on a day or whatever. Sometimes I kind of lose track. Okay, <laughs> It's a little hard to keep track sometimes what we've said, where, when, you know, whatever. But that I think Elizabeth and Lucas are going to try to have an open hearted conversation. And I don't really think they're going to be able to connect really. But yeah. I think that Lucas, that with the right person, that Lucas is going to be able to open his heart. And I think that, that, and I think that deserves to be the person he's going to end up with. Yeah, so it's like a lot of times that we say that uh, Na- that Elizabeth and Nathan deserve to have moments that are only just between them. I feel like yeah. Lucas deserves to have ha- deserves to have special moments with the person he's supposed to be with. Mm-hmm. So we're not completely like we're not anti Lucas. We just don't feel like Luke. I mean, honestly, I don't think Lucas and Elizabeth would last if they do actually go that route. I don't, I mean, Mm -hmm. everyone's saying that, you know, we've already went through this mounted storyline and all this kind of stuff. Like, there's so many storylines that besides Lucas, besides Nathan being a mounted that they could pull for Lucas. Yeah. For that. Well, and I had that's that's props to the riders in episode eight. I was digging said no pun intended to the ditch digging but i was digging um seeing lucas have a storyline other than the outside of the triangle yeah i like i loved it i i was impressed with Uh, lucas i'm ready to see more yeah see that's that's the lucas that i like i like lucas when he's not around elizabeth when he is around elizabeth they are really different when they're with each other and I, guys, I'm just going to go ahead and spoil this. We record it, like, we, we record on Mondays. But, um, so, because of timing of when we need to record this, we've actually already recorded, this episode will go up on Tuesday. We've actually already recorded Thursday's episode with Amy, um, Cross My Hardy. And she does an impression of Lucas that had me cracking up because of, like, it... <laughs> It like, almost it had gave, a little bit of a. It almost had a little bit of a Spanish, like accent with it. But well, at the same it was time, I could me think of like Maurice Chevalier, uh, who's a French actor. But the uh, the candlesticks in uh, I can't think of Luminaire or Lumin whatever on uh, Beauty and the Beast. Lum- um, uh, oh, oh, Lemire. Lemire. Lemire, yes, Lemire. That. Uh, you know, just kind of the way he would talk or whatever, which he patterned yeah. after Marie Chevalier. Yeah. Um, so he nailed it, though. Like, that, At first, I thought it was Spanish, it but was as I was hilarious. Yeah. As I, I got at, she was keep doing, I was like, oh, she's doing her French. She's, you know, because she's from, uh, she has family in Louisiana, yes. and I'm obviously from Louisiana. So I was like, it, could, it took me a second. Yeah. Um, but yeah, she did. Uh, she's just hilarious in this episode. Yeah, she that is. Word that you're going to get to see Thursday. So stay yeah. tuned for that because it's a lot of fun. And she, the way that she, and she talks very kindly about Lucas and how she talks about Lucas's yeah. character. Like we don't. Well, really, and, and even how her eyes have been opened to things about yeah. Lucas. She, and she's team she Nathan. Quickly, like, we are all three. Yeah, she, yeah. She, all three team Nathan. And she opened up to the fact that she was up uh, at one point pretty closed off to Lucas mm-hmm. and not really opening her eyes to Lucas's side. And these past two episodes have really opened her eyes to Lucas. Yeah, and I had to I agree really with her. That. I was the same. I was the same way. I had my. I was. I was kind of closed off to Lucas. I was like, I don't want to even want to like him. Um, mm-hmm. but he seeped his way but, into my heart. But, but when 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 Lucas is around Elizabeth, she is his world. He turns into this romantic, yeah, person. But yeah. when he's not around Elizabeth, he is actually an incredible dude. I mean, come yeah. on, he is. Yeah. He is he's on it when he's not around elizabeth yeah but i'm like i i love seeing him aside from elizabeth he is and to me i loved it i love change a whole lot when he's around elizabeth i love i and with like i love when lucas and nathan have scenes together where they actually come have a conversation Mm -hmm. and i like whenever he kind of gets in his um like whenever before like the old Derek blew up and his like the way that he was acting in that episode was just I loved it um mm-hmm. because despite him probably could have easily died he didn't have that many uh that many scenes with Elizabeth in that episode mm-hmm. which kind of shocked me but um yeah I like that we got to see uh a different side of him so yeah I really liked that too 
So are we ready for heart to heart with the hardies to jump on Let's that? Do real quick? Let's All right. do it. All right. So we have um, a few more on here from earlier. Um, somebody uh, at uh, WCTH underscore 2021 said, finally, there's nothing in the way of Nathan showing his full self to Elizabeth. I agree. Agreed. That wall has been broken down and they're going to buy me a soda. Yeah. <laughs> she got me this time. <laughs> oh boy. At Anna underscore Daisy 725 says team Nathan all the way with tons of exclamation points and fun emojis and girl, we're right in there with you. Um, uh, at Pam underscore, I'm honestly have no clue how to pronounce this last name. S T E I N K E. Um, asked, do y'all think they'll mention Doug at all? And how can Elizabeth get over the fact it could it couldn't have been it could have been Nathan instead of Jack? Um, I feel like we've already discussed the part about um, how she'll get over the fact that Jack took Nathan's place. So I don't really feel like we need to go through that one again. But do you think they'll bring up Doug? I want them to. Mm -hmm. But they might feel like there's been too many seasons past and that a lot of the newcomers won't know who Doug is. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. They They have put a lot of parallels from the previous season, so maybe... Yeah. And if it's not Elizabeth, maybe Rosemary. Yeah, I Rosemary kind of doubt they'll mention. It's one of those things that I hope will happen, but that I doubt will happen. Yeah, that's kind of how I feel. I want them to, but yeah. Um, at Miss Pascal Jean says Lucas will ask for a break after the wedding as he will understand why she chooses him instead of Nathan he'll ask her to come back only if he's a 100% sure okay I'm a little confused on that but I think basically she's saying that Lucas is kind of gonna give Elizabeth some time to process and that he only wants her to come back if she's 100% sure and I agree with that which again I think we already kind yeah, of talked I, about I, the way I can agree with that. I, I, I can, I can see where that would work. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do think that she's going to push both of them away, though, especially after this bombshell was secret. Yeah. We'll, well just have to honestly, see how. I think, yeah. And then plus with the Bachelor, Bachelorette game, mm-hmm. might show him some things, too. Might show both of them some things, too. Whoever it was that said that they would probably run out of the room at that point if they were Elizabeth, I agree with you. And my mom agrees with you as well. <laughs> I said Although that. I can, I can actually see, um, I can actually almost picture Nathan running after Elizabeth at that moment, though. Yeah. But I, I, can, I can kind of picture that happening. Um, Unless Lucas stops him. Yeah, but I don't think Lucas is going to try to step between the two of them. Honestly, yeah, I don't that's see it. true. That's true. Unless he really feels like he's doing too much and he's kind of doing it as a protective cause. Give her some thing. space. More of a just yeah. a give her some space. She'll talk to us when yeah. she's ready. Yeah. yeah. Not necessarily like stopping him, stopping him, just being like, look, dude. Mm-hmm. Just, just leave her alone. Mm-hmm. Just give her some time. At. WCTH underscore biggest underscore fan, which is our friend Bella, um, said, Hey, Bella. Asked, asked feelings on Lucas. Just now, I haven't given up on Elizabeth. Um, I think, uh, Morgan, what do you think? Do you have any specific thoughts or? I think this next, next I think this next episode is really going to tell Lucas what he needs to know about Elizabeth. And how he, she really feels about Luke, how she really feels about Nathan, and I say that because he's going to find out that find out what exactly she said to to Nathan after finding out that he told her he loved her. Yeah, and I think that that's going to if she's honest with him, 
it's gonna tell it's gonna tell him what he needs to know yeah that's gonna be really or confirm what he already probably thinks from obviously observing with his teeth yeah (laughs) nathan's been holding a lot of tea there guys he might just uh we were was it was it on our live i think it was on our live sunday night um that uh the theory started coming out of possibly this is one of those things that i don't see happening it would be a shock i mean uh brian bird has said that the finale is going to be shock worthy and morgan's starting to get mad at me because she doesn't want to see this happen (laughs) sorry morgan uh but that you know they keep saying that there's like 90 days until Allie's adoption is finalized so you know something is very likely to go wrong and people are saying what if you know back in those days especially you would have to you know they would want you to be married before you adopted somebody so what if Nathan and Elizabeth kind of do an emergency wedding at the end of season nine so he can adopt Allie and it's like I don't really like I would be shocked honestly if that happened there is part of me that would really love to see that just for the heck of it no 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 okay guys if you want to trigger me talk about candles and we talk about that in thursday's episode if you want to trigger me talk about candles if you want to trigger morgan mention that jack uh nathan and elizabeth might get married at the end of season wedding All little version of a shotgun wedding. Oh Lord. I actually want to see because despite him going to prison, mm-hmm. because if you think about it, go back to whenever Nathan first went to his office mm-hmm. to Bill's office to talk about the adoption. Bill even said that things could come out that could stop the mm-hmm. uh the uh adoption. That could be one thing. But, uh, but Nathan also said, yeah, that's why I want to hurry up and get this over with. So that way, while, while Dylan's in jail. Yeah. What if Dylan could get bailed out by one of his buddies? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, something could happen to where, where Dylan is released. And he could come after Allie and start and uh, kind of, you know, try and get Allie back. It's like Susan Firth wrote in one of her fanfics about how Alec, uh, Dylan come back, but only using the, um, only bringing up the fact of taking Allie back uh, unless, like, again, Nathan gives him money. Mm-hmm. So playing oh. the classic act of, like, you know, she's my daughter. I love her. I, I, I. You know, I didn't feel ready at the first, but, you know, I think I deserve a chance to, you know, all this kind of stuff. I'm her biological father, you know, that, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Because I, I, I would want him to come back. I feel like there's still, still some things because, you know, one, Allie never met him. Mm-hmm. I feel like there's some still, I feel like there's still some storylines they could play out with that. I'll be surprised if he comes back. Like, I would, I want him to, but I just kind of have this feeling that, um, that's going to be one of those storylines that slips between the cracks. Yeah. Um, but uh, to, to go back to the question of what do we think of Lucas right now, um, I, I feel like I said this a few minutes ago that i um, very impressed with Lucas aside mm-hmm. from the triangle. Uh, I felt like his story was very strong. But I feel like when you put Elizabeth into the equation that their storyline just kind of goes flat. Yeah. I mean, I just, I just don't see them having a really strong storyline together. And as far as what uh, Bella said that uh, she hadn't given up on Elizabeth just yet, we saw Elizabeth being Elizabeth in this past episode. We saw some of her coming back. And I believe it yeah. was Hardy C. Nathan. Um, I could be wrong. I think it was Hardy C. Nathan that I saw comment on somebody's post um, in the preview from next week when she's standing there having a the conversation with Lucas that I think it was Hardy's team, Nathan, said that they think that's the outfit she wore the first day back at school teaching after Jack was killed. I don't know. I would have to go back. I would have to go back and do some digging on that. Yeah, it'd be one of those um, things. But, and I think the outfit, it could be. But I also think that what if the out, 
I'll have to go back to the Instagram post that they that 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 uh, Elizabeth took not only with um Allie, but I think she took that uh uh that she took a picture with Allie and Allie uh who played oh well Aaron took a picture with Jada and Jada took a picture of herself in the same outfit with all, with Nathan and his red surge. Mm-hmm. But it's the outfit that we're gonna see in the same episode as the I believe love is worth fighting for, and I want to say. That that's the episode where Elizabeth and uh, Rosemary. No, Elizabeth and Nathan are walking in the church together uh, for the first time for season six. I don't remember because it's the blue with the stripes in the skirt, and we know mm. her top is blue. I remember that, but I don't know if it's the same color blue and if the skirt's the same. I don't know. But like, send us all your theories and such. We love hearing. We love hearing um, in the comments of uh, what y'all think. And and you know, a lot of you, a lot of you agreed with us about Nathan's secret. So, Mm -hmm. if there's anything else that you guys want to talk about, or you know, have us mention, or uh, if you want to be a part of the yeah, start with Hardy. yeah, if there's a specific topic that you would love to see us cover, I mean, we kind of have ideas going forward, but we're definitely open to suggestions if y'all uh, yeah, have or a if you guys remember, if y'all remember a specific th- scene that happened maybe from season one to season five that kind of go corresponds with the love triangle or different things like that, because we, we there was there's been a lot of triangles all mm-hmm. throughout the seasons. Like this is yeah. this isn't the only triangle that when calls yeah. the heart has pushed well, out. I know, I, I know I posted um, on my Insta story a few days ago a picture of Nathan, uh, the dance scene where uh, the ladies' choice dance scene where Elizabeth chooses Lucas to dance with. And you can see Nathan in the background watching them. And I posted that picture and I was like, hmm, anybody else feel like we've seen this scene before? And I posted the picture of Jack watching Elizabeth and Billy Hamilton dance. And I'm like, oh yeah, now I remember. And I had several people message me going, I completely forgot about that. And then- I um, totally forgot that Billy Hamilton was even on our on the series. I knew he was in the movie yeah. and it's played by the same actor, but I totally forgot that he was in the series. And uh, I remember we talked about this before you put that out because uh, me and you talked about it. And I was like, I, and I think it was you also who said this, or it might have been me. I don't know. I, I'm like you. I kind of had memory loss of this, but we, I think, or we both agreed that poor Jack had to stand there and watch it because he was on Yeah, because he was on duty. Yeah. He was on duty. And yeah. uh, Nathan actually got to walk away. Mm-hmm. Poor um, thing. Yeah. Uh, but uh, that was another thing like a lot of people were upset with uh, the fact that Lucas kissed Elizabeth's hand first of all he has every right to they're dating but they're dating. As, far uh, as, as far as whatever happens between Lucas and Elizabeth from the start of their courtship to even now it's mm-hmm. all within the grounds of courting they are officially yeah. courting mm-hmm. so it's all fair game like it's yeah. not like she's cheating on Nathan. And they have they it. have every right. Yeah. I yeah, mean, they I have think every we right to do about it. that because we're watching from the outside. But when you're yeah. living that out, it's a heck of a lot different situation. It really is. And guys, is. remember, whenever the season is up and you're able to go back from episode to episode one and watch the episodes without having to worry about breaks, without having to worry about, you know, waiting until the next week's episode to come back on. My if depending on where you're watching, you could even not even you not you don't even have to watch the the uh Marshalls, commercials so it's gonna you're gonna if you binge watch it like that with no commercials and no interruptions and no wait time you're gonna see the season completely different oh yeah 100 it's gonna be completely different because i've said that myself so did uh carrie numerous times on lives and on this podcast it's gonna be different whenever the season is over and it's in the words of jada when everything happens and it's all said and done, we're going to understand why things the way they have happened. And I firmly believe that. Yeah. So, yeah. All right, guys. Well, I think that's just about all that we had to talk about for this episode. Um, If you guys want to hear anything else, if there's anything we missed that we want to talk about, you know, you could also catch us on live on Instagram. Um, Mm -hmm. 
we have we'll link our uh, our own individual uh, accounts in the uh, in the description, along with our Hope Valley Central Station Instagram, where you can put in your thoughts and your theories, uh, DM them to us, and you could be featured on here. Um, as you can see, we put out the username, so you might get people who will follow you because you were mentioned on here. That'd be awesome, obviously. Um, so yeah, don't be afraid to put comment as long as you guys are respectful with each other mm-hmm. and with us. You know, this is a safe zone, as I've always said, within and just about every uh, podcast. You're free to express whatever team you're on, and mm-hmm. as long as you're respectful of the other team and you're respectful of the actors and you're respectful of the other people along with us, your comments will stay. But if you're disrespectful, if you're mean, if you say things that are out of line and not, not PG, your comment will be taken down. Mm-hmm. So you know, yeah, we want to hear from you guys. That's one of the best parts about this is getting yeah. to hear you guys. Um, so yeah. We love to hear from you guys and we can't wait for the next podcast. We can't wait for the next episode. We can't wait to do another live. So, and we want you guys to, we want as many people to join us as possible. It makes it so much fun when there's a lot of people. Yeah, it does. I mean, we We had Casey from the Hardy's Hotline was on our Instagram live with us this Sunday night after episode eight. And we had what, like 60 something people? Yeah, a little over 60. The deck, the Hallmark guys were there. Uh, yeah, Jack from, from uh, Bubbly, Bubbly Sesh. Sesh, Jinx Bounty. Uh, <laughs> I got it that time. Are we ever going to say that at the same time? That's the question. <laughs> I know. I want to do it at the same time. It, it might be better when we're actually in person, which we are making plans to see each other in person, guys. That would be but, so funny. Um, that would be That's so much fun. Be so fun. Yes. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, hopefully we can do it then and we can actually get it on camera. Um, that would be uh, but yeah, we love you guys. You guys make we this so much fun. We would not be here doing this without you guys. Uh, exactly. So keep watching, keep tuning in, subscribe, comment, like, share, do whatever your heart, do whatever your heart's content tells you. So, do whatever your hearty heart desires. <laughs> yes. Um, but yeah, so we'll see you guys Thursday with a new episode with a special guest and then hopefully on Sundays with our lives and sometimes we do some through the week it just depends you know depending on what scenes get leaked or you know what Mm -hmm. clips are issued out or what photos what little good little nuggets come out um so yeah and you will be notified every time we go live by following our Instagrams so be sure to do that guys um but yeah we love you guys love y'all we hope you guys have a great night great night great day whatever time you're watching this So, Mm -hmm. bye. Bye, guys.